Come, let us fix our eyes on the God who rebuilds, restores, and fills our lives with His glory. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr., thanking you, as always, on this lovely day the Lord has made. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I just pray, as always, that the Lord Jesus Christ is leading the way out front for you and your family as we get through this uh, very cool but lovely cool fall weather. Uh, Y'all know I'm a fall guy, so this is my time. I love the leaves changing. Get outside and look at the beauty that the Lord has put all around you, even in this transition. You know, so um, yeah, take it all in. It's going to be okay. All right, because we're still here, still standing. So, Let's get started. Our morning scripture reading comes from Haggai 2, 4 through 6. Haggai 2, 4 through 6 reads as follows. But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work. For I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I coveted to with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea, and the dry land. And that is something we definitely need done in this country. Amen. I know we all feel that way as we march slower and slower to that thing called election day. Get out and vote. I don't care who you vote for, uh, because you should be voting for whoever is closest to God's word, whoever is aligning themselves, or at least making an attempt to align themselves with God's word. We're not perfect, um, but we, but He is, and we should be trying to get as close to that perfection as possible. So right now, let's pray for the hope for our country. I know y'all have concerns. I do too. I served this country's mightiest fighting force, the U.S. Navy, for several years. So I'm there. I totally get it. But I also know that the correct answers come from Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, sovereign over all the nations, we we come before you today with our hearts happy and yet heavy, asking for your mighty hand to be upon this land. We thank you for the blessings we enjoy and the freedoms we hold dear for your abundant provision and grace that continues to sustain us each day. Lord, we confess that as a people, we have often strayed from your ways. And it feels that way right now that we're in that season where so many have strayed away. They're seeking their own understanding rather than walking humbly with you. We ask for your forgiveness, knowing that only in returning to you can we find healing and restoration. Lord Jesus, in this time of uncertainty and division, we need your wisdom and unity. Raise up the leaders who are filled with the integrity, the compassion, and a reverence for your truth. We pray for those who serve in these positions of authority. Give them the wisdom to seek justice, courage to walk in righteousness, and humility to listen to your guidance. May our nation become a place where peace reigns, where your love, your mercy, and your kindness is cherished and practiced. We lift up to you those who are suffering, the poor, the marginalized, the grieving, and the weary. May the Holy Spirit comfort beyond them and may we as a nation rise to meet the needs with generosity and compassion lord let the church your church be a light in this land proclaiming hope truth and salvation to all strengthen us as your people to live out your calling to be salt and light in every corner of this country Father, we we trust in your promise that you have plans to prosper us and not harm us, plans to give us hope in a future. So we ask you, Lord, fill us with that hope that is anchored in Christ. 
renew our vision for a future that glorifies you and unite us as one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May your kingdom come and your will be done here as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, we pray. Amen. All right. So the topic today is bent, but not broken. Maybe you feel like that right now. Maybe you feel bent, but you give God glory every day that you're not broken. So many of us out there feel bent, but we also know that we haven't snapped, which means we're not broken people. Our text comes from Luke 13, Luke 13, go ahead and turn there, 10 through 17. As we go about this month talking about the supernatural and uh, looking at different uh, demons and spirits in the Bible, uh, we come across a situation here that is very interesting, I found, and the Lord inspired me to push forward with, uh, you know, his inspired word to relate us to you all. And through his words, and me simply write them, writing them down, we've been understanding a lot more about the things that go bump in the night and in the day. <laughs> we, we, we have assumed that evil walks only in the night, but it walks 24 seven, seven days a week, all year long, looking to seek, kill and destroy, just like its leader, Satan. And so we're in Luke 13, starting at verse 10 which reads, on a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Ending it because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then, you, then should not this woman a daughter of Abraham, who Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what abound her? That is the question. Verse 17, when he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your already blessed word. Now, Lord, say what needs to be said, do what needs to be done. Take what has been uh, written down, inspired by you, and just take charge right now, Father. Let us learn from this woman who was bent, but not broken. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We see in this passage, Jesus is teaching in the synagogue on the Sabbath when he notices a woman who has been crippled by a spirit of infirmity for 18 years, bent over and unable to stand straight. And with his compassion, he calls her forward. He speaks healing over her and instantly she's restored, standing tall. Now, the synagogue leader, as we just read, is not happy about this arguing that Jesus has broken the Sabbath by healing her, but yet Christ counters with truth, pointing out the hypocrisy of tending to animals on the Sabbath while begrud begrudging a woman's healing. His words leave their, them shamed and the people rejoice in the wonderful works of God. But how do we know that we are bent but not broken? We know because he sees us in our lowliest state. 
Jesus Christ sees you in your lowliest state. We see that in verses 10 through 11. The woman's plight went unnoticed by others, but not by Jesus. She came to the synagogue despite her condition, demonstrating her faith. She was bent, but not broken. The truth is, no matter how bent over we may feel by these burdens of life, he sees us. Jesus, the Son of God, notices when no one else does, looking beyond the surface to the heart. This is a reminder that God's compassion meets us in our weakness, acknowledging every detail of our suffering. Maybe you're sitting there right now, wherever you are, and you feel like no one sees your pain. Maybe your pain is internal. Maybe your pain is not visible. But nonetheless, though, it's pain. It hurts. And maybe you've been dealing with this for a long time. And you don't know why you can't get rid of it. You don't know why the medicine's not working. Scripture is silent on that. Scripture is silent on why the spirit was bothering this woman for 18 years. Scripture is silent on why she was chosen. <laughs> we, we don't know, but all we do know is that Christ saw her. Better yet, Christ saw through her. Because that's the only way he would have known that this was not just a physical ailment, but a spiritual one. He acknowledged every detail, like he acknowledges the details of our suffering. It's not just a headache. He knows it's more than that. It's the unpaid electric bill. It's the unpaid water bill. It's uh, the problems in the marriage. It's the problems with the kids. It's the, it's the, the hope for better days with your family. Uh, maybe you're lost in the sauce of this country and you're so worried about what bill is going to be passed and how it's going to affect your home and all the stuff and things. I mean, he sees that you're hurting, but he sees beyond you to the source of why you're hurting. And that's the glory of God through Jesus Christ. He can see those things. A lot of times for us, let's just be real. We see what's on the surface until someone tells us what goes beyond the surface. However, if you are a child of God, if you believe in Jesus Christ and you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, but through your acceptance of Lord Jesus Christ, through your repentance and baptism, you know all around you who's hurting and who's not. You can just about feel it. For real, for real. We're bent, but not broken, because he calls us to stand when we can't on our own. It's not enough that he sees us in our lowly estate. No, it's more than that. He calls us up and calls us out to stand at those times when we can't stand on our own. Scripture says in verse 12, when Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Jesus not only saw her, but he calls her forward. This is the, th here's the beautiful truth in this. God doesn't just see the pain, he speaks to it. He invites us to step out of our brokenness and stand on the promise of his healing. For 18 years, let's keep this, as they say, let's keep it a buck. For 18 years, she was bent under this invisible weight that no one could see. Yet a single word from the Lord set her free from it. There, there is power in his call. When he speaks freedom, no chain can hold it. Y'all sing about the chain breaker. We, we, we write songs about this adjective describing Christ. But do you believe that? Do you believe today that Jesus Christ can break the chains of whatever demonic stronghold you're in right now? Do you believe today that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? Because if, if you don't believe that no one gets to God but through him, 
your chain stay locked on them legs. And every time you try to break away, you get a little bit further, but you're still locked to that ball, that old chain and ball, you know? So we see here though, he set her free. He doesn't just want to recognize our pain. He wants to liberate us from it. And people use pain nowadays. A lot of folks don't want to be free from the pain because then it takes away their unique significance to the people around them. You can almost get a, a, addicted to the attention the pain is bringing to you. And as a result of that addiction, you're really not looking for a solution. I was talking to a man last night on the phone who was quick to let me know how he comes to church to help and, you know, he doesn't rock the boat and all that, you know, but uh, don't worry about it, pastor. I'm good to go on my own salvation. Yet this man, the same man though, for 25 minutes, said the same conversation five times. Even he doesn't realize that he is in pain. He doesn't realize that he needs help. He doesn't realize even why he called me. He just wanted somebody to call him. Fact of the matter is, we need the Lord all the way, not just in times where we see it as convenient, not just in times where we think for a second that we can do it on our own and he can just come along and help. That way people can still see him. I'm being Christian. Okay. That that's not what we are doing here. Because when Christ, the light of the Lord, when it shines down on you, it reveals everything and anything that's impure and unclean. That's why he doesn't want to just recognize the pain. He wants to liberate you from it. And so many times more people are satisfied with simply someone recognizing they're in pain. But at the same time, they really, again, no liberation. And, and I don't know why. I, I, I'm not sure, uh, other than what I just said, that being that it's, it's an addiction. The attention is the addiction, not the pain. It's the, atti the attention. People are calling you now, uh, posting to you, replying to your Facebook post. Uh, you, you're being seen. The pain allows you to be seen. Yet here's a woman right here for 18 years who went unseen. Maybe she was known as the woman that was bent over. Who knows? Y'all know how we do in society. We give you a name according to what, how you look. You know what I mean? So that is, that is what we're seeing here. But not only does he see us in our lowly estate, not only does he call us to stand when we're where we can't stand on our own, he calls us because his touch restores and raises us up. Verse 13, he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Notice the reaction here. She straightened up and she praised God with a touch. Jesus healed her completely. This is what this was not a gradual process. It was instantaneous, complete, undeniable. The touch of God can restore what we thought was forever lost. Who I mean, if you go 18 years in pain, hunched over, you, you that does things to your mind. Whatever you're going through, maybe you've gone through it for quite a while and maybe it's done some things to your mind. Maybe you're out there right now listening or watching me thinking to yourself, I'm this woman. I am, I've been sitting here dealing with this for quite a long time. And maybe you never thought that it would ever go away until Jesus Christ came into your life. And then miraculously things began to change. Things begin to move. When, when you really got it, when you really took it in, when you really embraced it for what it was, what a joyful time that was, I'm sure. And we all have those stories where you've been dealing with something for 
10, 12, 15, 18 years, 20 years, and then Christ calls you up and calls you out and he puts his hands on you and it's done. What an amazing thing. We're reminded of Psalm 30, 11. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. His touch brings life where death was lurking and raises what was, what was once fallen. When Jesus touches us, he empowers us to stand upright, both physically and spiritually, to praise God for his mighty works. And finally, we're bent but not broken because his power challenges and overcomes the voice of opposition. Now you got it. Here's this last part here that we're living in right now. I'm sure. I'm sure many of you all have gone to churches or been around people who missed the boat. <laughs> God bless them. They missed the boat. We see in verses 14 through 17 that when this happens, the synagogue leader says to the people, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. How many folks have gone to a church where someone's there that needs healing and they say, well, the pastor's busy, you gotta come back tomorrow. And the pastor never gets the message, as a matter of fact. <laughs> never gets it. Y'all think we get those messages? Most of the time we don't. Now in my church, we, we, we communicate very effectively on that. They know how I feel about that. It should be instantaneous communication. There's no reason as to why she needs to come back yet another day to be healed when she's been there for 18 years and they ain't done nothing. And I'm sure they have seen her in the back hunched over. It wasn't a priority. That see, that's the thing. That's the thing. It did, did this didn't this does not become a priority on when you need to come heal until their little sphere of comfort gets rocked. Have you ever been around people when when their comfort gets rocked when you make a move? I'm one for the good, and people see as good, but now they got to regain control of the situation. They got to remind people of the of the synagogue policies. They got to let them know, hey, if you need healing, um, not today, come back tomorrow. This is where Jesus owns them. He calls them hypocrites. And then he hits them with a little bit of practical knowledge. Don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give water. Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? It's a simple common sense question. If you're going to take care of your animals before you come to church, are you trying to tell me we can't take care of her too? Are we not higher than animals, people? And you see here that, that, that Jesus gets under their skin because they really don't know what to do with that. Because they, he knows, like they know, like everybody else knows, that's what you did before you came here. You took care of your pets, you took care of your animals, and then you came, you got dressed up, you came to the synagogue. But, but what, what do we see here? What, what do we really see here that's really getting to the core of how we can look at this through our eyes here in 2024? Here it is. The voice of tradition tried to overshadow the miracle. The voice of tradition. Oh, we don't do that right now. We do that this time and day. Oh, this is not what we do here. You got to go somewhere else and do that somewhere else. Uh, yeah, I know that was great. I know it got taken care of. But next time, do it here because here we do this and we don't do that. Y'all have heard these things. But the thing is, Jesus can silence that with two things, truth and authority. The religious leader's objection stem from a rigid interpretation of the Sabbath law, missing the heart of God's compassion. They were so worried about following the rules, they missed the relationship. They were so worried about following uh, everything in the book that they missed the blessings around them, that the bear witness to the glory of God through Jesus Christ, because in their minds, well, we, we, this is what we going by. I know he says he's, he, that he's a son of God and everything, but this is what we've been going by forever. 
Why would it change now? Y'all got to get up out of that. Jesus reminds us that God values mercy over ritual. I'm going to say that one more time. God values mercy over rituals. Freeing this daughter of Abraham from Satan's hold in the long run. When we walk in the freedom he provides, the opposition will come, but his truth and power will always prevail. In his name, we stand upright. In his name, we stand unshaken. In his name, we stand bent, but not broken. Maybe you're out there right now and you feel hunched over like this woman was. Maybe you feel like there's a spirit of infirmity on you that has just held you down for so many years and the pain just won't go away. The chronic pain is there. It's shooting up your back like electric bolts on a daily basis and you have not been noticed. No one has even asked. The, your church leaders haven't even asked. The pastor hasn't even asked. They may see you suffering, but they don't see you completely. I'm here to let you know today that the Lord Jesus Christ sees you. He understands what's going on. And we see this spirit. We don't know why he hopped on this woman. We don't know what was going on for that to even occur. And we don't even know why he laid there so dormant as if though no one was going to see him. His sole purpose was to deter her from the synagogue, was to disrupt her life and to destroy her in the end. But the thing is, God, through Christ Jesus, saw this. And when he saw it, he called it out for what it was and raised her up into who she needed to be, an upright, standing, healthy woman of God. And now she can move on with the other part of her life. Folks, I know it may have took 18 years for this to happen to this woman, but I'm here to tell you maybe you already know what's going on. Maybe you've already seen it in your own life. You need to call on the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to let him know. You need to you need to cry out to him right now. You might be hunched over mentally in your mind. You can't stand up right because there's something on you right now that you don't understand. Why can't you get better? Why can't you get healthy? Why can't you get things right with you? Why, why, why? And you know who has the answers to that? Jesus Christ. Because you know why? Jesus Christ sees what's going on inside of you. He sees your spirit, where it's at, and how it is being held hostage by something so nefarious that it simply wants to deter your, you away from the gospel by creating emotions inside of you. It wants to destroy everything you've got going on between your relationship and Jesus Christ. And it wants to distract you from ever coming to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That is what this thing, this, this spirit was doing to this woman. And yet she's still in the synagogue. I I wish we all had the zeal of this woman who has been over 18 years, 18 years she's been going to the synagogue, 18 years she's been in pain, 18 years she's been going through it, 18 years they've been looking at this woman, 18 years who knows the comments and the questions people may have had for this woman and yet she still goes, yet she still goes. Now, everybody's case is different, but in this case right here, she still went to the synagogue and Jesus saw her. And on this day, she was healed. What a blessing. What a joy in knowing that when Christ sees us, he doesn't just see us. He sees all the things in us and around us especially those unclean spirits, those, those spirits that are bothering us, those spirits that are deterring us from him, that disrupt our worship and relationship and only want to destroy us in the end. He sees all that. And maybe you're out there and you know he sees it, but at the same time, you're capitalizing from the pain and you're in fear that if I don't have this, I don't get noticed. I don't get seen. And what do I do now? You are part of the body of Christ. You are part of God's family. You don't need this 
to mislead others just to notice you. And I, and I ping on this because I see it out there. People do this. Pain can be monetized in 2024. But at the same time, if you know the way out, if you know the way from the pain, let's take it. Because Jesus is there to rid you of it. A failure to do so will lead you to being turned over to your wicked ways. And as a result, you will be broken. But for those who are authentic, who come to the Lord in truth and love, who are bent, but not broken, stand by. You're going to stand tall. And if there's anything we can do to help you on this journey, if there's anything we can do, contact us at get-prayer.com for a little while longer. We're about to uh, move in a different direction with our website development. And so, but uh, the site is still up there. Be sure to reach out to us there and leave us a few lines of a prayer request or a praise report you may have about being bent but not broken. We would love to hear from you. If you're on Spotify, be sure to leave a reply. We'll have the comments open. and We would love to hear how you was bent but not broken. Until next time, may God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And God willing, we'll talk to you next week. You take care.